In this video, I'm going to do my best to explain the basics of AudioSnap, what it is, what it does, how to use it, and how you might find it useful. It's not a one-click, golden fix operation. It's a collection of tools that can be used for many different things, including fixing timing issues, changing tempos, extracting tempos, and creating triggers for drums or other instruments. We'll look at some of these functions in separate videos. Audio snap, fee vocal and groove clips are mutually exclusive, meaning only one can be used at a time. If you wish to use audio snap on a groove clip, for example, you need to disable it as a groove clip first. Now the basis of audio snap is transient detection. A transient is a sudden peak in an audio waveform. A drum hit is a very obvious example, but they exist in just about all musical audio. As a rule of thumb, they are the beat of the music. Sony detects these transients or beats, and we can use them to make adjustments to the audio. Let's have a look at an example. Here I have a project with some drum tracks, a bass and guitar. It was recorded live with no metronome. Drum tracks are a good example to use because of the sudden transients. To see the transients, I'll need to change the edit filter, which I'll do from the HUD, access by pressing T or clicking the middle mouse button. Sona has now calculated a tempo for the clip and placed markers where it has detected transients. Clicking on the clip should automatically open the audio snap palette, but if it doesn't, Pressing A or selecting it from the view menu will. This palette window will affect any selected clips on which Audio Snap is active. Many of these options are accessible from the Clip Inspector under the Audio Snap tab. Before we take a close look at the palette window, let's look at the transient markers and editing those. A transient marker looks like a hollow diamond with a vertical line on it. Like most objects in Sona, they can be selected individually, lasso selected, selected adjacently by using shift click or non-adjacently by using control and click. This will work across multiple tracks if required. We can insert new markers by alt and left clicking. A manually inserted marker has a solid diamond head. Manually inserted markers can be erased by right clicking and selecting delete marker or activating the erase tool and pressing and holding F10 is one way and then clicking on them. Automatic markers cannot be deleted but they can be disabled. Double clicking a transient marker We'll select all markers in the same position across multiple selected tracks within a user-defined time window of that position. We'll look at that later. Selection can also be done by filter in the right-click context menu. Access to this menu is by right-clicking on the clip, not on a transient. From here, we can use the Select Markers menu to filter whether we select all, none, move, stretch, disabled, enabled, promoted, or user created. Once selected, we can perform several actions on them. Let's have a quick tour of the context menus where some of these actions are found. There are two context menus within Audio Snap. One we've just seen is when right clicking on the clip, the other is right clicking on the marker. The select markers submenu I've just mentioned, and the next four choices are also available in the palette window, and we'll look at what these do when we start working with the Audio Snap tools. Merge and lock markers will copy markers from all tracks to the other selected tracks so that they have identical markers on them. This is especially useful for multi-track instruments, and again, we'll be looking at this later. Save as Groove opens the Define Groove dialog box, allowing us to save Groove to a file that can be applied to other clips. Copy as MIDI will copy any selected transients as MIDI notes, which can be defined in the Options box, and then paste it into a MIDI clip. This is how we create drum replacements. Quantize will open the Quantize dialog box, allowing us to set options and then quantize clips. Groove Quantize will allow us to open a Groove file to apply to the clip. The Pool submenu contains commands for working with the pool. I'll explain the pool later and we'll look at most of these commands in more detail as well. Finally, Enable Disable Auto Audio Snap will affect all selected tracks. Right clicking on a marker produces a different context menu. Reset, Disable, Promote and Delete will all be mentioned shortly. Snap stretch options relate to moving transient markers to pool lines. The pool needs to be active to use these, and I'll explain the pool and how to use it later. Stretch to and move to allow you to enter a time, and will then move or stretch the selected marker to that time. Audition beat will play the clip from the beat to the next marker. Split beat will create an individual clip from the selected marker to the next one, useful for quantizing without stretching. Audio snap palette will open the palette if it isn't already. Now let's have a closer look at some of these actions. Markers can be disabled if we don't want to use them, either by using the filter section of the palette, which we'll look at shortly, or right clicking on a selected marker and selecting disable from the context menu. We can also promote them, which will stop them from being filtered out so it's always present. They can be moved without affecting the underlying audio by click dragging on the diamond. 
the cursor will change to the select tool and then you can just click and drag it. You may need to do this if a transient marker has been placed incorrectly for example. You cannot drag a transient marker past an adjacent one even if it's disabled. Note that this hasn't stretched any audio at all, it's merely moved a marker. They can be moved and stretched audio with them by click dragging on the line portion of the marker. That has stretched the audio. Once a transient has been used to stretch or shrink audio, its diamond head will change to an arrowhead, which indicates the direction which it has been moved, and audio snap is automatically enabled on the track if it wasn't already. Transient movement and stretching can also be performed on multiple transients at the same time. Select the transients you wish to move, click on one of them and drag. If you hold down the control key, the stretching will happen proportionally. Any move markers can be reset by right clicking on any one of the selection and selecting reset, or alternatively pressing control alternate plus R. To reset all markers, you select all, then right click on any one of the markers and select reset. This is a complete reset and will also enable any markers you may have disabled or promoted. Now let's look at the palette. The enable disable switch acts as a bypass switch. If you've done any audio snap editing, disabling it will ignore any editing performed, but the edits are still there. Enabling it again re-enables the edits. To perform further edits, we need to switch the edit filter back to transients. Copy as MIDI I mentioned earlier in the context menu, and we'll look at this when we get to drum replacement. Split into clips is similar to the split beat menu command, but we'll split the whole selected clip or clips at each beat. We'll be using that when we look at quantizing. Clip time base defines whether the time base is musical and follows the MIDI tick, or SMPTE timecode based. Average tempo will indicate Sona's best guess at the average tempo, but there'll be other options that might be more accurate from the drop down. We'll be looking at average tempo throughout the various videos, especially when clip map editing. The audio snap options will look at them as and when we need them. The tools under the tempo section and timing sections we'll look at in detail in the various audio snap videos. The filter section is a handy way of filtering the transients. The threshold setting disables markers based on their volume. At 100%, all of the markers are disabled. And at 0%, all auto-detected transients are shown. If at any point you try to filter a transient that has been stretched, you'll be asked if you wish to reserve the timing changes or not. When the percentage figure is enclosed in brackets, it indicates that more than one clip is selected. The resolution setting disables transients based on their musical time position. All shows them all. Quarter, for example, shows those on the quarter beat. The render section sets the various algorithms for clips, tracks, or globally. There are various types of algorithms for different types of material. The Applies to drop-down chooses whether the changes made to the offline and online render settings apply to tracks, clips, or globally. The online settings is for the algorithm used in real time. Note that when listening to playback, the quality will not be as good as when the clip is bounced. This is just a trade-off between quality and CPU power required. Groove Clip is a fast option for general data, while percussion works better on material with percussive beats. The offline choices are as follows. Groove Clip uses less processing power, while not directly selectable, can be chosen using the same as online choice. Radius Mix is good for polyphonic stereo data, and the advanced choice is similar but provides a slider to adjust how much detail to preserve. Radius Solo works best on monophonic material and is extra choices there for bass and vocals. As I've already mentioned, AudioSnap has several uses for timing related operations and we'll look at all of these shortly.